Imagine holding a 15-pound medicine ball in your hand in front of you with both hands while standing shoulder-width apart with your toes facing forward. Now, rotate your torso and upper body sideways, keeping your lower body in a static position while holding the medicine ball with both hands. This is essentially the same feeling you need to develop to have a proper unit turn. Of course, in a proper unit turn, your hips should be turned around 45 degrees away from the net and your torso close to parallel with the baseline. Extension of the non-dominant hand across the baseline indicates a full body coil. Part of your left back or shoulder, if you're right-handed, should be facing to your opponent. The modern forehand may change some of your predetermined misconceptions you may have about the forehand. A few years ago, when I was studying the modern forehand, I was thought that the non-dominant, the left arm shoulder in my case, should just be left alone to do what it naturally wanted it to do. Even my coach at the time suggested that I point at the incoming ball with the left hand, helping to balance my body. But once I studied the top pro forehands on tour in greater detail, it became apparent that the non-dominant arm has a major role in assisting the coiling of the upper body during the initial takeback of the racket. In fact, with pros such as Federer, Nadal and Djokovic, they actively use the non-dominant arm to help them with the racket preparation during the take-back phase. Top pro forehands today start with the non-dominant hand holding the racket throat in the initial take-back. To begin the racket preparation, the tip of the racket should be pointed upwards towards the sky. There is a slight layback of the wrist during this key position. The reason the pros appear completely effortless on their shots is due to their fluid motion which allows them to adapt to different situations. All world-class strokes must have three essential qualities. They must be efficient, explosive and adaptable. Developing a smooth fluid take back is key to being able to have a consistent forehand. Many lower level players either stop their motion somewhere in their swing or have some kind of hitch which reduces the efficiency of their swing. In tennis, power comes from having fluid, smooth and explosive shots. Before incorporating any other elements, I want you to see if you have any existing hitches in your forehand shot. This can be verified by videotaping your forehand while hitting with someone, or while on the tennis ball machine. In today's modern forehand, players are taking larger backswings. Gone are the slow, compact backswings that were used in the old school days of John McEnroe. In the past, players used straight backswings and glued their hitting arm to their elbows. This was their entire stroke. In order to generate power on your forehand, you need a backswing that is large enough to accommodate a swing that is designed for maximum power and topspin. My old coach used to ask me, does your backswing resemble a full golf swing or a mini putt swing? At the time, my forehand had many features of the old school traditional forehand. While my forehand embodied the classic forehand, I still wasn't able to produce adequate power or topspin that I needed in order to crush my opponents. The reason was that my tennis swing resembled a mini putt swing because I had been taught to take the racket straight back on my forehand. It took about six months before I learned to incorporate the modern mechanics into my forehand swing. Most players are still being taught old school forehand mechanics by coaches because that is what they were taught growing up. However, today's game has changed and so does the way you need to swing for the ball as well. 